If you follow weather forecasts carefully, you'll notice that they often quote quite significantly different temperatures for cities as compared with the countryside, even when these two areas are actually fairly close together. This difference is even greater at night than during the day. This phenomena has a name, and it's actually called the urban heat island effect. The basic concept is a fairly obvious one that's easy to understand. A building full of people and electronic devices all generating heat is slightly warmer than an open patch of grass. The bigger the building, the more people and the more things inside it, the warmer it gets. However, this only partially accounts for the difference. The single building, while slightly warm in the surroundings, will soon cool down to be very close to the surrounding ambient temperature, and any increase in temperature would be barely noticeable. In cities, of course, buildings are not isolated from each other, and generally as you move towards the, the middle of a large town or city, buildings get larger and more closely packed together. And it's this overlapping of the heat profiles of each building that produces some of the heat island effect. To see what else is going on, you need to look at the difference between buildings and plants. Now, buildings and roads capture quite a lot of light from the sun, and this energy is used to warm up, and on a bright sunny day, buildings and roads will be warm to the touch. This heat is only slowly released, and the building will still be quite warm long after the sun has set. But then, surely plants also capture sunlight? Yes, they do. They convert a proportion of the energy in sunlight by the process of photosynthesis for the plant to use as energy, and some of the remaining sunlight, the energy is converted into heating up the leaves of the plant. However, at the same time, the plants are also undergoing a process of transpiration, where water is lost from the underside of the leaves. This water is heated up by the leaves, and the heat energy is then quite rapidly removed from the leaf when the water evaporates. So, if you were to spray buildings and roads with water, they would actually quite rapidly lose their heat. This is why a hot road dries out rapidly in the summer after a brief rain shower. Of course, humans also react to excessive high temperatures inside buildings by using devices like air conditioning to move heat around. And whilst this does make the room cooler, it adds to the overall heat island effect. That leaves us with the question, does this matter? And if it does, what can we actually do about it? Firstly, it does matter. The heat effect will actually mean that cities are not as cold during the winter, so snow will melt quicker and you have fewer frosty pavements. But you will also have more excessively warm sunny days. And whilst many people worry about hypothermia in the winter, far more people die of heat stroke or hyperthermia in excessively high temperatures. Now spraying water onto buildings and having lots of fountains all over a city is probably not ever going to be a practical solution. However, by using different coatings for the buildings and roads you may actually reduce the effect and having rooftop gardens and planting trees alongside roads and car parks both for the shade and also to reduce the heat island impact may be worthwhile. And if this is done in a planned and widespread manner may actually reduce the impact of the heat island effect.